Everybody, this is Coach Coventry from Mac Data once again with the OHSF All Decade list. We're going to be adding a defensive lineman slash blitzing linebacker, 3 4 4 3 type. He kind of played everywhere on that, that front seven, but uh, I'm going to let him do his own introduction, so take it away. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Nicole Fanai. I played for uh, St. Mark High School from 2013 to about 2015, or sorry, 2012 to about 2015. Um, I played outside linebacker slash DN and offensive line, whatever, whatever coach told me to play didn't really matter. Um, so I was, uh, started playing for them in my grade nine year on the varsity team, yeah. um, at the time that was awesome, but no, uh, my football career started originally with the, uh, Gloucester South Raiders in, uh, 2008. I was an offensive lineman. The only reason I ended up actually playing football was uh, my dad forgot to sign me up for soccer that year. So uh, I decided to play football in the summer. Um, I come from an Italian background. My brother played Team Canada soccer, so it was, there was an expectation for me to keep playing soccer growing up. But um, my dad forgetting to sign me up just made me switch over. Um, yeah, I and I mean, for you, the I, I don't even think it might be your dad signing you up. One look at your body type might also have to have you thinking, yeah. hey, maybe soccer might not be the best pathway for me as a kid growing hey, up. Yeah. Hey, you know, in those uh, those young ages, I was averaging like eight goals a game. Okay, no one was uh, no one was quite as tall as I was in that age. I had about five inches on the next tallest kid in the entire grade. Um, no, I so I started playing offensive line. I did that for two years for the Raiders. Um, and then I transitioned to defense and I was a uh, middle linebacker and no one taught me how to tackle, they just expected me to know how to tackle. And they let me blitz on probably 95% of the plays because of my size advantage. So I did that for a long time. Um, I moved up uh, to Pee Wee with um, Carlos Blizzard is my defensive coordinator for the Gloucester South Raiders, continue. And uh, he finally taught me technique. And uh, I learned how to tackle quite well. Um, I learned how to cover. My job was to cover the number three receiver uh, whenever we would switch to cover two man. Um, and uh, I learned how to cover like a defensive back, all those techniques. Uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, my main job was to blitz the quarterback on most plays. Um, but anytime there was a receiver that was bringing uh, us up through the middle, it was my job to shut him down. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I loved my time for, with the Raiders, but uh, after grade nine, once I got the chance to play for uh, St. Mark's, it kind of uh, went away because I wanted to play for my high school. That was kind of a dream growing up. It's kind but of a common not. theme we've we've noticed with a lot of the guys we've interviewed. You know, they they always say, you know, I wanted to play for my high school and I wanted to play yeah. high school ball. There seems to be something, you know, about like playing for your high school that you know creates a lot of pride and whatnot. And uh, oh. yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, you just you want to represent your school where you come from. Um, so yeah, that was what, what I wanted to do. But uh, at the same time as playing Raiders, I was playing in the Ontario Varsity Football League uh, from. I want to say 2011 to 2015, I did that. So during my time of Raiders and high school, I was playing that. Yeah. And this is where I really started to uh, take off as a player. Uh, I was switched to defensive end by um, the probably my favorite coach of all time, Jethro Constant. He was uh, the best defensive line coach I have ever had. Um, and uh, most definitely probably the best coach I've ever had. And I've had some really good coaches in my career. Yeah. Um, he utilized me so well uh, for run stopping and everything like that. That uh, St. Mark was actually like very lucky that I had him as a coach right before going in playing high school. Um, I led the league in sacks uh, in, I think it was 2013 in my second year of junior varsity. Mm -hmm. um, I had a great year. It was a lot of fun. I was playing actually with uh, Neville Gallimore that year. Oh, no, sorry. I was playing with Neville Gallimore the year before that. It would have been uh, a pretty ferocious front seven yeah. Yeah, with the guys. So, yeah. 
it was a lot of fun. No one wanted to run at Neville that year because Neville was even larger than me, and I was already 6'4", 225. And when we were, and I was 13 at the time. My God, so, I was definitely not that size growing yeah. up. That's ridiculous. Uh, so, <laughs> Devil, Devil was a little shorter than me at like six, two and a half, six, three, somewhere in that range, but like 260 and way faster than I ever was. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, so, that was a lot of fun. And then my second year of junior varsity, I got to get the reins over from Neville and I became the sack leader. So, it was a lot of fun. Um, and Jethro just made it a lot of fun for us. We taught us so much about getting off the line. But then high school came, and it was uh, it was time to give up Raiders, like I said. But uh, there was no way I was giving up Panthers uh, at the time because they weren't they weren't uh, competing schedules. And spring so, ball is really important part of the development. You know, we we love that OPFL OVFL stuff. I've coached it myself, and uh, yeah. it's it's something that's good to do in the off season while you're training and getting ready. But yeah. uh, for you. Uh, you were one of the fortunate people on this list. You played all four years of high school and you were a starter all four years. You know, very few people on this list have done that. And I, I'd love for you to talk about your time during Ottawa high school football from grade nine all the way to grade 12. You know, the coaches, the players you played with and, you know, just your time in the, in high school ball. What was going on from that, that start of grade nine all the way to grade 12? Uh, so when uh, I went to St. Mark, we were going through a little bit of a transition at the time. I think we were in our fourth year since St. FX had opened down the road, third or fourth. I can't remember exactly when St. FX opened. I just remember my brother graduated in 2010 and he played for the school and that was, I think, the year St. FX had opened. So it was like third year maybe, I guess. Uh, so we were going through some transitions. Uh, our team was way smaller. I remember my brother's squad was like a 55-man roster, maybe 60. Ours was like a 32-man roster if we were lucky. Um but yeah, so I got lucky uh, that year. I was big enough to play. They put me at defensive end, um, and um, in the second, in the first game, my uh, the starting defensive end actually hurt his ankle with a high ankle sprain. So I wasn't supposed to start or play very much that day. But I was playing against St. Pete's, and uh, I got lucky. I got to go in. I got absolutely destroyed in the first game because uh, I went against some. Very large offensive lineman from St. Pete's at the time. Um, they were way better than I was. Uh, but game two came. I think we were playing St. Joe's, and the defensive end wasn't ready to go. So I got to step in and play. And so I played every game in my high school from the second game as a starter. And it was a lot of fun. Um, I had some great teammates. Uh, I had uh, these two uh, – cousins uh Paul Tamer and uh Tony Tamer uh one was Tony was uh the middle linebacker when I was in grade nine and ten I believe and uh Tony was our running back and these guys were so funny it's that practice all the time making jokes uh and they just made it so interesting but at the same time Tony was the scariest person I've ever played with and uh I would call him a psychopath um <laughs> Because he would scream at you anytime you made a mistake. And he was, like, he just had, like, he wasn't big. He was only, like, 5'10". Uh, like, I had, like, six inches on him and probably, like, 50 pounds. But he was terrifying. And you just, you ran through walls for him because you were terrified to hear from him at the end of the game. Um, we had some really good players, though, like um, Graydon Campbell, who's also on this list. I got to go against him in practice for, I think, two years. It was a grade 9 and 10. Um, and, uh, he made me better every day because I got to go. So, up against no, all no doubt guys like that. that would absolutely make you a hundred times better, you know? Yeah. yeah. It, like it, night and day from what happened in my, uh, first game against St. Pete's, I, I got so much training going against Graydon. Uh, I took most of my reps, probably 75% of my reps against Graydon every single practice. Um, I'm not going to lie. Uh, one of my, my favorite player to play with would have been uh, uh, my buddy Nick Russo. Uh, I grew up with him uh, through elementary school. We played Raiders together. We played Panthers together. And then we went to, and we went to St. Mark together. So I had been playing with Nick for, at this point, like eight years, it felt like. Uh, we were going on like our 13th season together by the time we graduated. Uh, it was ridiculous how much we had played together. Um, he was my middle linebacker in grade 12. And uh, and grade eleven actually, uh, 
man, that guy, as much as he was short, he was the best middle linebacker I've ever played with. That was for university and for high school and uh, like everything else. Yeah, where did Nick end up? Uh, Nick actually didn't end up getting recruited. I was very surprised. Um, I think he got a couple looks from out east, but uh, he didn't end up going there. I felt really bad for him because he was – uh, he was more passionate about football than I think even I was. Um, he was well, shout out to Nick Russo, wherever you are, buddy. That's a, uh, that's a big co-sign from uh, Mr. Fanai over here. I, I would have, if anyone asked me like if he should have had a, a scholarship, he's one of the players that I would have said, definitely. Um, this dude found the ball regardless. You, you wouldn't, you'd just see like he would appear out of nowhere and just be grabbing ankles and pulling you down. Like it was awesome. Um, uh, at this time, I'm, when I was at St. Mark, I had uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Castellarin, and Mr. Kelly as my coaches. Um, it was a lot of fun. They were great coaches. Uh, we kept it light at practice. We uh, we had a lot of joking around. We were a funny squad. I'm not going to lie. We we, uh, we got in trouble a few times because we would get a little too loose. Uh, I think that was a little bit because our coaches were loose and we were. So, like, sometimes we would go a little too far. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I think Mr. Brown really liked our, us growing up. Um, I actually got to take his daughter to the prom. <laughs> that was funny. I'm surprised he allowed that. Um, but, uh, no, I was going to say, you, uh, better, uh, you better be on your best behavior on that one for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I was. Don't worry. Uh, no, high school football was awesome. Uh, I think my most memorable game – would have been the Ashbury game. We were in grade 11. It was the first time we got to ever play at TD Place. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Ashbury, uh, a lot of their kids were talking trash before the game and just thought they were really good. Our offense at the time, I'm not going to lie, when I was at St. Mark, our offense was atrocious, like, for a while. Like, we just, we didn't, like, we, we could never, we never had a true quarterback. We always had receivers come in and play quarterback. And, Props to them for taking the position. Like, uh, and but at the same time, they knew they didn't want to play quarterback, but they they did it anyways. Um, our offense uh, was struggling, but at the same time, in that game, played quite well. I remember um, our running back. I'm trying to remember who. Oh, it was Andrew Jellino, I believe, at the time. Oh, he was our uh, he was our H receiver. He took a handoff though from from a slot back and he just took off and. He laid this Ashbury linebacker out, and uh, put this in perspective. Andrew Jelano was like five foot eight and like 140 pounds. And this linebacker was like six foot, like almost 200 pounds, and he just beat him, and then kept going. Uh, and this play went for like 40 yards, but I'm pretty sure Andrew pulled his hamstring on the play, and ended up being tackled for like on a 40 yard carry instead of what would have been a touchdown. Um, we ended up winning that game like 18 nothing. That was so much fun just to beat them down because they were like, they were just talking so much before the game and they thought they were so cool because they all came in with their track suits because they were all in their private school. And it was just so much fun to kind of just beat them down. Um, I know that Ashbury is now apparently a good team in high school football, but at the time it was kind of funny. It was their first season joining our league. But I think that was my favorite game. Um, my least favorite game would have been my last game of grade 12. Uh, and that's where uh, in St. Joe's for the finals for the AAA championship. Oh, yeah. And Jala Lasana decided he wanted to become a god and uh, torch our defense for probably 200 yards rushing and, like, touchdowns. Yeah, we have the footage of that. That was uh, a pretty pretty great game by him. Coach Kelly still has it uh, on file. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, 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 unfortunate for you guys, but, I mean, that doesn't take away from any of your individual accolades. It's just unfortunate no, that the team uh, couldn't, couldn't put it together in that, on that day. Yeah, no, we, uh, we, we ended up beat – we actually beat St. Joe's the year before in the same championship game. So, it was, it was kind of like revenge for them to beat us. Um, yeah, Jala, that's no small feat, you know. That's that's two yeah. offs to championship uh, city finals in in a row, right? You know, you're yeah, like, exactly. You're, it's it's not easy to go from you know going th- and you know back then it was again people have to realize that the the league was divided single A, double A, and then the triple A, quad A offs yeah. at the time. So as a small school, you know, uh, because you had been separated from St. FX, 
being able to even even get to a final at that point is, is pretty impressive because, you know, uh, one, you lost half your players to another school. And then two, on top of that, you know, like you guys stayed resilient and we're still able to, you know, pile enough talent to get you, uh, especially on the defensive side. You know, you, you said the offense wasn't so good, but definitely on the defensive side, you were yeah. making stops enough for the time to get yourself to a final. And that's, yeah. that's what was good about it. Yeah, so uh, it was funny because like our first two, like our first two years, we were unfortunately like just, we struggled because we didn't have those players from Santa Fe. So we we kind of had to go back. Like we had uh, we did have a quarterback in my grade nine, ten year, but we didn't have anyone to help him. Uh, but uh, in grade eleven and twelve, we didn't really have those those quarterbacks. But we so we had to adjust and become a running team again, like St. Mark's was always growing up. When I, like when my brother played and when my sister went to the school. So we, we went back to our running game and that's what got us to the championship in grade 11 and 12. We kind of got away with that, uh, from that in grade nine and 10 because we had uh, Justin Poitras as our quarterback. And so he could run himself. So we just let him pass. And then if he ever wanted to take off and run, but it wasn't an effective system. So we kind of got away from what they mark football was all about because we finally had a quarterback that we thought could like do something, but we had no help because I'm not going to lie, Santa Fex, when they left, they took all of our uh, our speed guys because uh, uh, St. Mark is uh, much more of uh, like country kids playing offense and defensive line. You know, you got like... Yeah, that was definitely the, the vibe of St. Mark's, especially when I was playing, you know, yeah. in, the, in the late 2000s. Uh, it was run it down your throat. We're big, we're, we're tough. Yeah. And, you know, like we have some skill guys on the outside, but we don't, we don't need to use them because we're, yeah. we're going to impose our will on you. You know? Yeah, so we yeah. went from having those guys on the outside, like uh, like Kadeem Valancourt back when my brother played, and now we we ended up just with our big boys. And mm -hmm. so we we uh, we got away from that a little bit in my grade nine, ten years. We went back to it. Played St. Joe's in that first finals. I think we won by two points. Uh, and then the next year in grade twelve, we lost by I think three. We missed a field goal, like a. 45 yard field goal, I think it was, for our grade nine kicker. Hey, like that's was, impressive. Was, yeah, we put a grade nine kicker, and I think he kicked four field goals all year. And we put him in to kick this like 45 yard field goal. I'm not going to lie, I didn't really agree with the call to put kick the field goal because uh, I'm, I'm the long snapper at the time. And uh, I'm not going to lie, my long snaps were not that great. Um, in, the grade, in my grade 12 year, I kind of got away from practicing that summer. And uh, our operation time was uh, was uh, struggling because of me. And so I didn't think we would even get the field goal off. Um, we did. Our kicker put it up, and he actually dropped it right – like what, it landed one yard into the end zone, right into Jala's hands, just underneath the bar. And I tried to tackle Jala uh, in the end zone and tried to force a fumble. And Jala broke my ankles and got out and uh, got, got to the three-yard line, pushing the ball out, and they took a knee to end the game. So, uh, Jala, I, I just, just so you know, I'm still upset about that play. You couldn't have just fumbled that one time. I've played you, like, 15 games in my career, and you've never fumbled, I don't think, uh, off memory. Uh, I just need you to fumble that one play. That was it. Well, my damn ankles. Unfortunately for the team, obviously it didn't go your way. You got lucky the year before, you know, you, you yeah. had that, that, no, I wouldn't say lucky, you know, you, you were lucky enough to, to uh, win a championship no, no. the year before. And sometimes it just doesn't go that way the second yeah. year. But for you personally, you know, things didn't end there. You obviously, you, you know, were lucky enough to start your recruiting process to the next level, starting in per, perhaps grade 11 and then going into grade 12. And, you know, for these young student athletes who are growing up playing high school ball and whatnot, uh, you know, like what was your mentality going into your senior year and being recruited, not just like the championships and the team, but like you as an individual getting noticed by university scouts and, you know, like what your mindset was like getting into that? Um, so uh, my mindset was a little bit different than uh, some of the other kids because I had uh, kind of been part of the recruiting process for a really long time. So um, it was... I think I was in going into grade nine. It was the summer going into grade nine, playing for Panthers. And uh, Darrell Adams, uh, the who was the defensive line coach for Carlton when they were coming back, that day, like, it was before their first season. They were coming back, and he came out to my practice at Cumberland. And um, he saw me, and he thought I was a coach. And then he saw me putting on pads, and he goes, that's a player? 
And they said, yeah. And uh, my recruiting process started pretty much right then and there. Uh, so I had been part of the recruiting process for a long time. I had gone on about like 15 visits to Carleton in my first, like, like my grade nine year. I was practicing with Carleton constantly. Uh, so by the time grade 12 came, uh, the recruiting process wasn't anything new to me. I was uh, I was more relaxed about it than some of the other kids, I think. Um, but uh, when it came time to like start looking at schools like other than Carleton and Ottawa, um, I only took a couple visits. Uh, I went to Guelph uh, one time just to watch a game. I don't even know if it was an official visit with the school. Like I kind of just went, I think, on my own, um, watched a game, had some fun, checked out their stadium. It was really cool. They had a nice, beautiful. Uh, no, no, sorry, it was, it was a. It wasn't beautiful. It was nice. Their new, their new locker room that they were putting in at the time was beautiful. Their older one was. It was really nice. It was under the stands. So cool to like see you walk out from underneath the bleachers. Um, yeah, no. I at that time, like I was, uh, I was pretty focused on where I wanted to go. Um, through grade nine, ten, and eleven, I was committed to Carleton in my head. Um, uh, but then uh, I decided to go take an official visit to Mac, um, and uh, they won me away. Uh, their campus was absolutely beautiful. Loved it. Um, football team made me feel like a family, uh, especially after the game. We went to this little restaurant on campus. It's inside like an old, uh, it looks like a church almost. Or um, And you'd go there, and the whole team pretty much shows up. You all get food, drinks. Um, Team, like people, all the fans come, family. It just, it's a party after the game. You celebrate. And um, that's what I wanted to be a part of. Um, and uh, so I had a tough decision. Did I want to go with the Ravens, who I had known pretty much my entire recruiting process? Or did I want to go with the school that won me over with one visit? Um, and uh, so I took some time. I took about a, two months or so, no, it took about a month and a half after that game. I decided on my birthday, uh, my birthday is at the end of October uh, in my grade 12 year. I guess I was pretty early commit. Um, and uh, committed to Mac mostly because of, at the time, Coach Potasic, who uh, was an amazing coach for McMaster, but I didn't end up getting to play for him when I went to Mac. Yeah, yes. he ended up leaving in those mid years. Eh, he went to the yeah. pros. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was coaching in the CFL at that time. But he's back now, which is hilarious. You know, he's, yeah, yeah. So, so the, yeah, the, the whole time that you were planning on going there, he decides to go. But he's a receivers coach anyway. You would have just, as a head coach, you probably would have just had him as a, a mentor of some sort or somebody. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I liked Potasic mostly because of his uh, personality. He was just a he was a very personable coach. Uh, if you had a problem, he was like a person that. Even though you didn't know him super well, he was very open and you felt like you could tell him absolutely anything. Um, in my recruiting process, like any question I had, I, I think I texted him at like two in the morning one time. I had a response within 30 minutes. Um, he was just a very like on top of things coach. He was there for you, always wanted to be there. So like I just, I felt like I wanted to play for him, even though he wasn't my coach. I had, I liked my defensive coordinators at Mac, my defensive line coaches. Um, but uh, I think Potasic was my main reason for wanting to go there. Um, but yeah, the recruiting process was a lot of fun. Like I said, I did like I didn't I didn't go on many visits. I went on one official visit to Mac. I went to Carleton to watch games. Uh, went to Ottawa to watch games. Nothing crazy. I didn't go on massive to like big tours of the schools, mostly because I had already kind of decided where I wanted to go to school. Um, so when it came time to decide, I had. Uh, three schools on my list. It was Carleton, Ottawa, and Mac. Uh, I chose Mac, like I said, um, and uh, that was uh, that's pretty much it for my. Yeah, recruiting. it just goes to show, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's okay to take that one extra visit. Though you get five now, and uh, you get five official visits, but you know, uh, showing student athletes that you know that that one visit could change your mind about things, and it did for you in this case. And you know, ending up at Mac was a uh, was a pretty cool thing. Uh, you know, your first year at Mac, you were lucky enough to, to dress and play. So, I mean, uh, talk to us through that, you know. Um, so, my first game was against the uh, Carlton Ravens, uh, funny enough. Um, Nate Bahar at the time was the best receiver in the league. And uh, 
luckily enough for us, he was injured. So uh, he been for three plays and he, I think, threw a pass for like 50 yards and caught a touchdown in those three plays. So luckily enough for us, he was on the bench. Uh, we won 40 to 10 that game. Uh, I got to go in in the fourth quarter with about three minutes left of that game. Um, and uh, kind of like my grade nine, uh, I got ab- like my grade nine first game against St. Pete's. I got absolutely demolished because Carlton's offensive line, as I found out that day, was an uh, average size of about six foot five and 315 pounds. Um, that was a surprise. And um, I had never seen the uh, backside cut block before when you're running an outside zone. i uh, never seen that before in my uh, career. So I found that out the hard way when uh, the right guard, I don't know his name, unfortunately, uh, cut blocked me right in, the, uh, right in my backside knee and uh, took me down. And uh, that one it, like, caught me by so much surprise. It hurt like hell. I was fine. Uh, it, it was shocking. I'd never seen it before. And, uh, but uh, ended up working out because I ended up playing Carlton uh, the next year in uh, at Ottawa, and that helped me out a lot. But yeah. uh, no, dressing was a really cool experience, especially for your first university game ever. I was the first game of the season. Um, and not too many guys, like seventeen or an eighteen-year-old, get to dress in their first year. So you know that goes to show you that they thought they thought a lot about you, and they thought you were ready to play and you know ready to contribute in your first year. Yeah, so when I was being recruited, Potasic uh, had told me that there was a good chance that I was going to dress the uh, first couple games of the season. Um, with Potasic being gone, I didn't really think too much of it, especially the defense alignment that were there had told me there's no way that I was going to dress at the time on my first day there because I told them what Potasic had said. He's like, like he, he was just pulling your strings. There's no way you're going to get it to play. I was like, yeah, you're probably right. But like at the same time, you never know, right? Um, they, uh, they converted me from defensive end to uh, three tech. And the second day of training camp, we had a flurry of injuries on the offensive line. So we sent half our defensive line to offensive line. Every rookie that was on the defensive line that year, other than me, was sent to the offensive line. And so um, we were down to, I think it was nine total defensive linemen. And so I my chances of playing went up pretty quickly. And so I got lucky that I got to play in my first game. Um, I got to play in my second game as well against UFT. This time I got to play a little bit longer. I think I got six plays against Carlton because we stopped them on the, like, uh, after they got their first down. Um, we, I think I got about six total plays against Carlton. Uh, I played about five minutes versus UFT. We're running a uh, hurry up offense. Uh, I was uh, I was an exper- an experience. Uh, they uh, they marched the whole field on us pretty much, um, and uh, I for the first time in my life was absolutely exhausted on the field for playing. Three, like I was on the field for about three minutes, and I was dead. That it never happened before because I'd never seen an offense move the ball so quickly in my life. Um, it was I just realized really cool. that you got to be in pretty good shape, you know, to play U sports. Yeah. Not just even as a big boy, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to get up and move and have that cardio and that stamina, right? Yeah, it was a uh, it was eye opening, especially to see how fast guys were. Like uh, receivers were just the routes were so clean and so quick. Like even for like, no offense to UFT, but they weren't considered a, a great school, especially when I was at Mac. Like they were uh, lower mid year, I think, when I was going there. Like, um, and so it was like kind of surprising to see like how good even guys were on teams that aren't considered good. So it was like, what are they when you go play Western or yeah. like teams like that? So just seeing the speed and like how, like how fit you really had to be to be playing university ball. Um, but uh, the next week uh, we were playing an away game and you dress, I think it's eight less players for an away game. I think it's 47 versus 53. And so uh, I didn't get the dress. And uh, the next, the week after we did the same thing and then it was our bye week. And uh, I uh, actually hit heads with my uh, um, roommate uh, at Mac, Jacob Zott. We hit heads just doing one-on-ones, and uh, I suffered a major concussion. I didn't know at the time, and so I practiced the next day. 
but I was feeling really sick and like my head was hurting. So um, I went to go get checked out at the doctors and uh, they diagnosed me with uh, a not too major, but like a, a pretty major concussion at the time. So uh, I ended up missing pretty much the next month of football. I wasn't really around the team. I think I was showing up to like one practice a week. Um, my uh, my mental health suffered a lot during that time, just being away from home, um, especially with the concussion. I'm uh, very uh, like I'm very close with my family, and so uh, I uh, ended up deciding to transfer after my first semester uh, back home, and uh, I chose Ottawa over Carleton, even though Carleton was uh, the school that I was mostly considering to go to. Um, I chose uh, Ottawa mostly because I had a chance to play my first year. And because at the time I was a commerce student at Mac and Ottawa Commerce is a very highly regarded school. They're a top, a top 10 ranked school when I was switching. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking about that. I did not end up getting into commerce. Uh, I missed about a month of school as well during that time. My grades were not good enough. Uh, I am I'm now a poli sci student at U Ottawa, and uh, so I went to Ottawa. I uh, rehabbed uh, best I could. Um, got another minor concussion in the uh, uh, during training camp, uh, but uh, I was fine. Cleared me to play in the season. I had to miss two games uh, to start the season. The U Ottawa, so uh, 2017, I missed the game against Queens and. Uh, and golf and uh i was back first game was against york that was a lot of fun it was uh it had been a year since i'd played a football game so that was my longest drought i'd ever had i usually play games my longest drought for a year is like five months while i'm switching from fall to spring league so that was kind of new uh not playing football for an entire year um and uh as soon as that game came up i became the starter for uh U Ottawa. I was starting at uh, the three technique. Um, then my second game, I went right back to McMaster and uh, got to play against them. Um, now, what was that feeling record. like? Yeah, I was gonna say, what kind of what kind of feeling was that like? You know, going back to the, the school that originally recruited you and whatnot. Um, it was uh, it was pretty fun and it was awesome uh, going back. The uh, the team treated me like family when I went back, so was nice that they didn't hold a grudge like no one everyone came up said hi to me um I was a little nervous because I know how good off uh, Mac was too so I was, I was a little nervous that I wasn't ready to play them um especially because it would, had only been my it's only my fourth game at U, at uh, university level and two of them I played under it's four right so I was a little nervous um but I was also really excited to see them um just go back Got to talk to all of them before the game, we chatted up. Uh, during the game, though, we went to war. Uh, first half, I think it was 3 nothing. Went into half for Mac. Uh, we ended up losing the game, I think, by, like, two scores. Um, it was just a rough game. Our quarterback exited the game, I think, with a concussion. Um, and then, but uh, I made plays. I got to tackle uh, a few tackles. I got to uh, go against my, uh, my roommate, Jacob Zott, a few times. Um, that was fun. Got to go against um, my running back friend Justice Allen, um, and then uh, I uh, I'm not I didn't get credit for this block because uh, Ty Cranston uh, jumped over me and got way more of the ball. But uh, Mac was lining up for a field goal. I think it was the third quarter, and uh, I got my hand on the ball. I was like I blocked it. Watch the film. I see Ty Cranston on top of my back with his hands behind me blocking the ball as well. So. Uh, thought I was I thought it was awesome I thought it was awesome it's like I finally got a field goal block at university I felt great and everyone's like you didn't do anything <laughs> I was like oh. so but no it was funny um it was a lot of fun though and uh it was just getting to play university football was a lot of fun uh, it was different it was way more hours um yeah, it's a big commitment, right? It's taken a lot of your time, and being a yeah. student athlete in high school is one thing, but it becomes, you know, it's, uh, almost a full time job to be a student athlete yeah. in university, um, right? It's it's the whole triangle of balance where it's school, social life, sport, right? And you got to pick two of three, as we've talked about before with other guys. You know, it's it's you can never have all three, and one of them is going to suffer. Yeah, uh, 
I, I mostly just chose football. I didn't even choose the other two uh, at all, pretty much. Um, it's uh, football, like, came a lot. I think I uh, calculated how much time we were doing at uh, Ottawa. I think I was putting in close to 36 hours a week with my uh, game day routine. And uh, so it was a lot of hours. Um, school was starting to pile up, but uh, I was able to stay on top of it for the most part. But uh, I got an, another concussion, uh, last, sorry, second last week of the season. So I ended up missing the Western game. Uh, yeah. And so did like four of my other defensive linemen. So we went there with one starting defensive lineman. Um, our team put up a great fight, but we lost. We came back, we played Guelph the next week. And uh, that ended up being my last game uh, of uni uh, university sports because I got sick a few months, uh, sorry, a few weeks later after the season. With uh, H. pylori, and um, it took a huge toll on my body mm -hmm. between my concussions that I had, not just during university, but growing up as well. Um, it was uh, it was a lot. I tried to come back in the spring, and with uh, spring training, and I first first practice back, didn't even take a hit. I just hit my head on the ground doing tackling drill. I was concussed again, and. Uh, that's pretty much when I knew football was over for me. Um, it was really hard to accept that football was over for me. I didn't let go right away. Um, I ended up being back uh, and staying with the team through the 2018 season uh, as kind of like a coach. The defense lineman, I, uh, I looked over most of the rookies, helped them with uh, them one-on-one -on -one when because uh, it's hard for – it's hard for Coach Massey. I think we had like 16 defensive linemen at Matt. I'm sorry, at U Ottawa. So it was hard for him to uh, always pull them aside and talk to them one on one. So I would do it uh, between plays and stuff like that whenever I could, just to give them help. Or and if they just had questions about where to go for school, like where to go get something, especially for deferrals for exams or papers, because I learned that quite well with my concussion problems. So. Um, I, I helped them as much as I could. I tried coaching. Um, then uh, it was at that point, my, season, my time of football was over. I couldn't really stay on the roster as a coach. Um, as a, but it would have been my fourth year. Um, I just, there was no point. So uh, I decided to walk away. And uh, so now I'm a political science student. Like I said earlier, uh, I got switched. I transferred from back. So I'm a poli sci student uh, at U Ottawa, but now in my fifth year, and um, trying to finish out my last year of school. Um, it just goes to show, you know, as uh, as we've talked about before, uh, you know, football is not forever, and it's one of those things that when it ends, sometimes not on our own terms, we have to, you know, come to terms with it at, in the way that we can, but also realize that there has to be a backup plan, right? You know, the idea of a student athlete truly is a student athlete right it's not it's not the other way around um as much as we'd like to play football forever it's not it's a situation where we're not going to end up doing that um and you know it sounds like uh you know as much as you love playing you've also taken your your mental health into consideration your physical health as well you know with the with the concussions and whatnot that's super important so you know good on you for that and you know no one can take that away from you you definitely are doing the right things and that's that's definitely not uh, not something you should worry about, you know, uh, going forward. It's uh, your your mental health and your your physical health and your your brain's health is, is one of the most important things that you can take care of, right, for long term. Uh, um, uh, for me, it was it was a lot of it was uh, physical. My mental health was suffering at the time. But, uh, it was not at the forefront of the decision. Um, my physical health at the time was bad. Uh, I couldn't really do much. Uh, the head, my head was like, sorry, everything would spin constantly for me. Um, even though I haven't played since 2017, uh, I still have problems today, like with my head. Um, I love football. I wouldn't change a damn thing that I did, but it was still hard. I loved it. Um, football, like, it can be hard, but at the same time, it taught you mental toughness. Yeah, um, and that's a that's a perfect segue. You know, uh, for those student athletes that are listening, like what what is a piece of advice you could give them? You know, uh, going forward, you know, from your career and something that you took out of out of football. What what is football given to you? You know, um, just honestly, taught me how to work through absolutely anything that you need to. Like, I've had many injuries 
uh, playing football and none of them had have ever stopped me except for now when you've had multiple concussions because fortunately, but uh, I would say that remember everything that football, like, like everything you've done to push through with football, you can do the same thing with anything. Like school is extremely difficult for me, but I know that there's no way that I can't accomplish it, especially when I was playing football um, at the same time as doing school. I know that I can push through. Um, I would just say that, like, remember to take care of your body as best you can. Because um, I know I didn't growing up. Like, I, I, I just don't, I never had the cleanest diet. I, I worked out, but I didn't work out as hard as some people. I didn't rehab, uh, like, minor injuries, like a sprained ankle and stuff. So I'd just say, like, take care of your body as best as you can. And if football is starting to impact your mental health, maybe take a step back slightly from it um, if you can. Maybe take a break if you can. Just uh, try to spend time with family, friends, because as much as you love football, it's going to be gone eventually. Even if you do make it to the NFL or TFL, you might have even a 15-year career. By the end of that, you're going to be, what, 36 years old, 37 Um maybe a little older depending on when you graduate uh but uh your family and your friends are going to be there forever um so i would uh i would say try to spend as much time as you can with them don't let football overtake too much of your life like make it a priority but don't let it become the only thing that you ever focused on yeah. i know i did for a while and uh it definitely affected my life hard to get back with like my friend group after because like i hadn't seen them in forever so uh i would say that it's just like try to balance your life as best you can listen to what your body says and uh remember to to enjoy it because uh not enjoying football there's no point in doing it especially at the university level you're putting in way too much work at the university level to not be enjoying your time um like yeah, high school is meant to be fun and university is as well. But, you know, university, again, there's that added pressure of, you know, performance and whatnot. Yeah. High school, high school, high school. Yeah, you know, we want to perform. We want to be good. And we understand that, you know, it, we're playing for our high school. But that, that university level ends up being just a little bit more, you know, and it's, yeah. it becomes a little bit more of a, of a business at that point. Right? Yeah. And like, like, like I said, like, make sure it's a priority. Make sure football is a priority, especially if you're playing at the at second level playing university regardless of what school you're at uh but just remember that if it's taking too much of your life and you don't have anything else then you're probably putting a little bit too much on it and maybe take a step back and try to see and remember what else uh what else is good in your life absolutely and i think those are some pretty wise words to end on there nicarlo i really uh really appreciate your time and uh you know we've uh had a pretty good discussion about, you know, your, your pathway. And I think it's uh, super important for student athletes to, to recognize that, you know, like you said, football is finite. And uh, for a guy like you, you know, you're impactful in, in your time in OHSF. You're impactful for the two years that you played at, at Mac and Ottawa U. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, you didn't get to, uh, to leave football on your own terms. But, you know, you, you, the impact is definitely going to be felt in this decade. Uh, and in Ottawa for years and years to come. So, you know, we just want to thank you for that and thank you for putting in the time uh, and welcome to the OHSF All Decade list. Thank you very much. Thanks for putting together the list and uh, for the interview. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I love high school football and I love football in general. Um, Eventually, uh, if I can coach and help out and do uh, like my duty to help the next generation, that'd be awesome. But uh, I'll shoot, nice you Coast Castle. I'll, I'll shoot you Coast Castle Aaron's email. You can send him, you can fire him off an email. I don't, I don't know if Coach is going to want me there. I might bother him a little bit too much. <laughs> I think you can, he'll use all the help you can get. They got a big program right now. They're back to having a full, full-time junior team and a, and a full-time senior team. So, yeah, the junior yeah. the junior team was doing quite well. The last time I, uh, I stopped by the school, I think I stopped by. Uh, they won the Valley this year. They're the they're the reigning Valley champs. They beat the Iron Friars oh. and the Almonts. Yeah, they won. I knew, I knew they were going to the championship. I didn't know they won, though. Yeah, absolutely, nope. they won. Definitely That's check awesome. in with, with Coach Castle Aaron, man. It would be nice to have you in the ranks, and we'd love to have you there. Yeah. No, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll send him a message uh, later. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the interview, and thanks for everything that you're doing for uh, Ottawa football. 
uh, seeing it on uh, Instagram and stuff like that. It's awesome getting to see the kids, getting to go where they're going. Uh, there's a lot more hype around it than uh, when I was uh, graduating, and that was only four years ago. So it's awesome. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I can do that for you guys. And, uh, you know, as I said before, welcome to the OHSF All-Decade List. And this is Coach Coventry signing off. Take care. Have a good one, Carl. Thank you very much for the interview. See ya.